Yeah. And that, where that farmhouse yes. is okay. where I'm it parked the office, all the time. But, and then um, we have, you go through the, through the, the bottom, the and there, no, there's a house on the right, and then there's a smaller house up on the top. Just on the east side of that, that third house, I'll call it on the top, there's a fence line there, and it runs back about a mile. Proof them and that's my east fence line. And that's straight back about a mile. We're live now. Okay. We're live, I guess our TV's not working this morning. So good morning. It's Monday, April 1st, 2024, 9 a.m. to the Muskegon County Board of Supervisors. Uh, first, I'd like to call the meeting in order. First item on the agenda is to review the agenda. Move to approve as presented. I have a motion by Scott and a second by Nathan. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same. Motion carries. Item number three is discussion of possible action to approve claims dated April 1st, 2024 in the amount of $411,493.17. Move your approval. I have a motion by Scott. Second. Second by Kurt. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same. Motion carries. Item number four, items with the county engineer, Brian Horowski. 4A is discussion of possible action to approve the Muskegon County DOT FY 2025 secondary roads five-year program and secondary roads budget. <coughs> morning, Brian. Good morning. Well, um, so today um, I was hoping to show the DOT budget and our DOT five-year program. <coughs> uh, I think it'd be best to start with the with the budget. Um, it's the, because I have mine separately stapled, it's the three-page one. Yeah. So this budget mimics, um, our local budget, um, the numbers are exactly the same. Uh, there, we run two two budgets. Um, we have a local and a DOT. The way our local budget works, if you if you flip to the third page of that, on the le on the left hand side, there's there's four major items in the bold print there. Um, there's 70x, 020, 71x, and 72x. <clears throat> so the way our county budget works, our local budget is the construction there, the 020, is off by itself. And then the other three, the 70X, 71X, 72X, are grouped together. Um, we cannot run, overrun either one of those two groups. Then we also cannot bust the final number as well. The way this budget works, the DOT budget, is these four categories are kept separate, um, but you, you can overrun each category, but you cannot do it by more than 10%. And then you cannot overrun the final number there at the, bot at the bottom right. You can't bust the total. So it's the same number, same items. It just goes by different rules. Um, I assume it's another form of check checks and balances. So um, like I said, all these numbers in the budget um, mimic what what we spoke about in January for, for the local. So, um, I, not, I should back up. The whole reason I brought this here today was that uh, um, the DOT budget is due April 15th. Um, it did not get blessed with going to April 30th. So I think our local budget is currently set for the 15th. Um, but I just wanted to make sure um, that we get it out there and uh, get looked at. So... <clears throat> So that's really all I had for the budget, unless someone has any questions before we move on to the, to the program. <clears throat> all right, moving on to the program. The easiest way to go through the program is by <coughs> using the map. Does everyone have a copy? Anyone out here want a copy? Like I said, the easiest way to go through this is, is by uh, using the map, um, the uh, that eight-page packet with all the numbers. It gets a little a little confusing at times. So, um, <clears throat> I'd like to start with our our, our FY25. So, if you look at the map, it's the yellow 
uh, backdrop on the boxes. <coughs> so starting in the upper left-hand corner, um, we have our, our right-of-way purchase money. Um, that's kind of just a standard placeholder for us. Uh, some years we we get close to that $25,000. Um, some years we fall, fall short. It all depends on where projects are at in design. Um, this year we have quite a, quite a bit of, uh, of right-of-way purchasing, so um, I expect us to expend the majority of that. Uh, moving to the right there, um, the next FY25 <coughs> is our 160th Street Bridge. Um, we have that one. Uh, we're, we have started design. Um, we hope to let that sometime this summer, but it'll be in FY25, so we'll have to wait till probably July to let it. Um, continuing on to the right there, the next the next yellow one is our North Isaac Ave Bridge. Uh, that one's actually under contract right now, and the contractor is out there. Um, it's shown in FY25 um, because uh, when we did the program and, and, and budget, the local budget, the uh, contractor hadn't showed up yet, and they had until July 1 to show up. So the the fiscal year us running off the fiscal year is is, is really kind of cumbersome and not user friendly for our department because we don't know exactly when contractors will show up um a lot of work can happen in june or a lot of work can happen in july so as you see there we only show 50 percent of the funding in fy25 it's somewhat of a guess will, will they have half the bridge done in 24 and half in 25 I would say right now they stand a pretty good shot of getting it all done in 24, or at least 90 some percent done. Um, way over on the right, upper right there, we have the 120th Street Bridge. Um, I, I think I've spoke about that before in our design update. We have that designed, um, and we have the right of way purchase, so uh, we're hoping to get that thing on the shelf and ready for letting sometime this summer so <clears throat> going down uh kind of in a clockwise pattern there down towards the bottom there's the trolley ave bridge uh that bridge is designed um we're currently working with the state um it'll hopefully be in the i believe june or july letty um <clears throat> I, I, I guess i wasn't speaking to speaking to the funding as i went um, all these have been local funding until this trolley bridge. This trolley bridge will be all federal funds. So that will come out of our, uh, our, our bridge money. <clears throat> um, so that means it will also have uh, DOT oversight when we, when we do build it. Um, there, there at the center bottom, you'll see the Stewart Road X61, the PCC reconstruction. Um, that's going from about Fruitland Road to, to the city limits of Muscatine. Uh, that'll be a pretty, pretty expensive project, um, and that is all local funding. <coughs> Excuse me. Over on the left-hand side, uh, we have our Call 25. That's just kind of a, a placeholder. Um, most years we do do a call project. It's a lot of times it's stuff that um, we can't quite handle in-house, uh, just due to the size of the culverts that we're working with. A lot of times it's larger pipe culverts. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, and they're somewhat scat scattered through, throughout the county. <clears throat> so a lot of times there'll be two, three, four culverts that are included in there. Right above that is our 230th Street G28 PCC reconstruction. That is all FM funding. Um, that's an FY25. That was going to be a joint project with Louisa County. Um, up until last week, Louisa County um, had a bit of a change of heart, um, which is totally fine. Um, they're going to go with a asphalt, and they're most likely going to go with asphalt, and they're going to lump together um, a few more miles of their road, um, hoping for uh, uh, better bid prices and and hopefully be able to resurface more miles of road um it, sh it really shouldn't affect us too much um as far as our pricing goes um whether we're tied with them or not at, le at least i don't think so <clears throat> and that that is a pcc reconstruction um we have the one thing that's not shown on here because it 
it, it doesn't have to be shown on the program is the Moscow Road, um, the paving from Highway 6 to F70. Uh, that is in the current this month's current letting for the DOT. Um, we're pretty excited to see where the prices come in at. There's been a lot of uh, uh, a lot of interest, a lot of questions um, that have been posted about it, uh, and we're we're excited to see those what those prices come in at because um, it, it it could potentially change up how a few of these look. Um, construction prices have been a little wild over the last couple of years, along with everything else, but uh, um, they've they've experienced some increase, but um, they are starting to go down slightly. So, Brian, did you? Uh, uh, I just want to ask a question on the trolley avenue bridge. Were you able to get the easements and that all in order on that? <coughs> yes, I believe so. We have we have a we have a verbal. We're just waiting on on okay. paperwork to get signed. Very good. So that that's FY25. Um, that that's all all of next year's stuff. Um, we can just kind of then go, go around again and I'll just pick, pick out everything. Um, there in the kind of the center, uh, top there in the purple, <clears throat> that is our, uh, 150th, 155th street bridge, bridge 143, uh, bridge rehab, deck overlay, joint repla repairs, um, and hopefully some, uh, bridge railing retrofit, um, so that's the big bridge. That's Doherty, Doherty, that's Doherty Bridge. bridge. Um, so we have that in currently for our FM funding, 420000 and our bridge funding of $1,680,000. Um, so that, that, that'll be a pretty substantial project. Um, mm -hmm. That'll be uh, quite a bit uh, of different types of work happening all at the same time up on that bridge. To the right of that in the blue and for the FY27, we have our <clears throat> old Highway 927, or F58, our Bridge 121A replacement. Um, that will be, it shows swap funding there. That's just the way that, it's, it's not really swap funding. It's still federal. I can't explain why the state did it this way. But when swap went away, they kept some swap for bridges that are on system. Um, so any bridge that says B BRS is, is an on-system bridge. Some of them say BROS, that's an off-system bridge. So our off-systems will be shown as 100% HBP funding, and then our BRS, or the on-system bridges, will be shown as swap and HBP. It's all the same. I, I really can't answer why they changed it. Um, it, it it's a little confusing, but it's all, it's all federal bridge funding <laughs> right next to that um, we hope to tie these two projects um, is our old old highway 927 or f58 pcc reconstruction um, we have fm funding and stbg funding um, we hope that this project is <coughs> is tied with cedar county um, cedar county plans to do a fairly similar project as us as far as the <laughs> reconstruction and paving Excuse me. So um, you see the FM funding there in the SDBG uh, in the most recent round of our Region 9 uh, uh, SDBG funding grants. I applied for additional funding, um, and we'll know if we get that here with hopefully within about two months. So, so then continuing to go clockwise, they're down in the uh, lower right in the green is our FY26 100, 180th Street Bridge 204. Um, <clears throat> the, that will be all local funding. Um, and I know I know that we've started design on that. Um, that has, a, that box culvert has a few things ailing it, so. Continuing on, we have, to the left of that, we have an FY28 in the purple there, Sweetland Road PCC reconstruction. Um, that'll be currently planned as both local and FM funding. <clears throat> that That's going from New Era Road south to Highway 22. To the left of that, an FY27 in the, in the blue text there is our 180th Street Bridge 214. Uh, it's actually currently a box culvert. 
uh, we plan to replace that, um, and that is currently planned to use federal funding of the HVP funding of $1.8 million. Then continuing on to the left there is our, uh, in, in the, I'm going to call it brown, uh, in FY29 is our North Mulberry Road, um, X54 and 155th Street, um, or F70. So basically we would be going from the city limits of Muscatine north to F70 and then east to Moscow Road, or X54, where X54 and F70 uh, break apart there. Um, that came onto the pro uh, the program this year. Uh, <laughs> it, it's kind of it's odd because when we develop our programs, we're supposed to be uh, fis fiscally restrained, I believe, I believe is, is what it is. And well, the, the, the issue with that is, it, as you can see, it's a pretty hefty SGBG funding of $4 million. We don't have that money. We have not been awarded that money. Um, so it came onto the program, but yet it's in, I, I submitted the application to the STBG program uh, for our region nine, and <clears throat> we'll know in a couple months if it will be funded. I, I highly doubt it will be funded. It's, um, uh, the way the region nine works, it's, it's not a formal agreement, but it is in writing. Um, more or less it, it, it won't really be our turn for the funds. So, um. But in order to score highly on their grant application process, you need it in your five-year program. So it came onto the program. How I foresee it in future years is that FY29 will probably get bumped back a few years. So that, that's kind of a long, long explanation of how, how and why it ended up on the, uh, on the program. It, it certainly needs to come onto the program. It'd be great if we did get the funding. I just don't foresee it. Um, in this round of, of SDBG funding. To the left of that, um, in the green text there is our FY26, um, 155th Street Bridge, um, Bridge 142. So that is the smaller bridge that is east of the Doherty Bridge. Uh, as you can see there, it, it'll, it'll all be federal funding. Once again, even though it's SWAP and HBP, it's, it's on system. So um, it's, it's really all federal funding. Um, so that one, that one's coming up. We, um, we've gotten that one surveyed and, and we're starting to crank, crank away on it. So and then on the left hand side, you can see again, um, there, there's a, all four years we have a call 26, call 27, call 28, call 29 project. Um, and, the, and that's local funding. Again, that's typically, uh, some, some culverts that, uh, we just don't quite have the equipment to do in-house, um, larger pipe, potentially some precast box culverts, maybe some repairs that are specialized to some of our current culverts. Um, sometimes uh, we will do like lining steel steel pipe culverts that have a lot of uh, cover on top that, you know, it would be more economical to line than it would be to dig them up and replace. Mm -hmm. So, And then... Above that, um, the final one there in the purple, the FY28, the Bancroft Bridge, Bridge 2, 237, um, and that, that'll all be federal funding, the, the HBP funding. So yeah. and we've, we've begun work on that too. We've actually begun work on, on a large majority of these, if not all of them, <coughs> as far as survey um, and, and starting to work, work through the process of design, so. Any questions, comments, concerns? <coughs> Brian, to, on ballpark, roughly how many bridges and culverts do we maintain in the county? Uh, so we have roughly 100 bridges and culverts. Um, a, bri a bridge or a culvert is anything that's considered over 20 foot long in length. So if you have a twin box culvert, that is each, each uh, barrel or cell of it is 10 foot or wider, that's considered a bridge. Okay. Um, under under twenties, I. Oh sure, it, no, it's, it's a it's a huge number. But yeah, we have a, we have roughly a hundred bridges. Which 
I mean, oh, we do have some bridges that have some pretty significant size to them, but yeah. um, our, our number of bridges is actually, I would say, quite a bit less than mm-hmm. a, a lot of other counties. There's some counties with, you know, 300 plus bridges. Hmm. So. And it seems that we, um, I mean, if you, I know this all comes from different pots of money. The amount that's solely locally funded, and I'm not talking necessarily about projects, but if you're just going to look at local tax dollars going into bridge and culvert and road work in a given year, the actual construction and, and, and uh, you know, repair, what's that look like? As far as dollars? Yeah, like how many, how many of these tax dollars that we spend on county roads, and again, not talking about equipment, but just the roads, the bridges, etc., Roughly speaking, I'm not. I'm not trying to put you on the spot. Well, you can uh, a good judge of, of new construction. So, um, you know, we have our maintenance dollars. If you go back to the budget, there. Yep. Um, <clears throat> there, there's the state puts constraints on on what is funded through construction and what's funded through maintenance. Okay. Um, if you basically, if you build anything new, it's got to be with construction. So I would say that's a a pretty. That, the number there is, is somewhat high for construction, and that's just kind of mostly because of where a lot of these projects have landed. And um, is that the 70X budget there? The 020. I'm sorry, 020. I'm looking through. So that's right. a pretty significant okay. number. Um, usually I would say construction is somewhere around, uh, you know, a million to two. It all just depends on, on what we have for large projects coming up. But we, is, we, yeah, is all that local dollars then? or? <coughs> some of that is, is will be bridge funding. Okay. Thank you. I mean, bottom line, if you look at the, you know, if you look at the expenditures, you're around what seventeen million, and the local property tax funds two point some million a year. I don't know what the number was, but it's around two million. Yes, right? it's a hair over two million. So, so, so we're we're. Where the local property tax provides about one tenth of the road funding that we utilize between federal bridge, farm to market, highway bridge program. Um, I'm not sure if that one point million, if that includes the ta- sales tax, the local option sales tax we put in there. Uh, it does, if I, if I remember my budget numbers. Yeah, I mean, typically, typically between our our, our uh, local property tax dollars, our local option sales, and then our road use tax dollars that we get back from the state, yeah, I believe that totals usually around eight to nine million. So that's what we're having in revenue, and then we we get roughly currently we're getting about three quarters of a million in uh, bridge funding a year. Uh, that is, we, we are told to not plan on that in the future. We're told that's going to decrease back down to roughly where it was at a few years back, which was, we were around half a million dollars. Um, then we also get about a million dollars worth of FM funding every year. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And then uh, the STBG is, is, is really um, mm-hmm. a little bit of a wild card. Um, exactly what we get. We get it in, in, in lumps of money every so many years. Um, we've gotten quite a bit here recently, um, but that's because it was more or less our turn to, to receive the money. And that, that all is 100% depending on administration and the federal government. That's surface transportation for Watt grabs what that is. And they, they both, both that... I've seen swing, pretty significant swings in that in the last 10 years, you know, depending on the administration and the negotiations at the federal level, level what happens with that money. And then we, that is, <clears throat> we get of that money, that's the Region 9 transportation that actually Scott sits on as well as I, but that's made up of rural Scott County, rural Muscatine County, and the city of Muscatine vie for those dollars mm-hmm. and I believe Riverbend Transit but mm-hmm. Riverbend Transit usually doesn't get uh, too much that's, mm-hmm. we try to keep most of that money to the roads something that's crossed my mind a little bit since that we had that meeting with the community foundation on them ARPA funds and I completely support that project but there's $875,000 there and it, it sounds like we got these 10 bridges that that's why I was asking you earlier on 
you know, the likelihood of prioritizing which one may be mm -hmm. the best to fit in that. And those funds, it sounds like those funds could be allocated for some of those projects if we deemed them. And I, it's mm -hmm. not that I'm against the other project. I'm not saying we don't support the other project, but it's crossed my mind, is it more beneficial to the county taxpayers on for that money to go to you to, to maybe allocate those? And I, I'd like to see those. Mm -hmm. And the price, because I don't know, maybe it's maybe they're too expensive, maybe it's not uh, a worthy idea, but... Well, I think you have to have, it has to be in your five-year program. It has to be in your five-year program. For you to spend it, for any money to be spent on it. Correct? Yes, for construction dollars to be spent so, on it, it has so to be in our five-year program. If we were to do something, you know, that that's gets into, and you know, and I think some counties bond for bridges and yes. things, but then you have to do that. Planfully, so you would have to have the funding arranged, mm -hmm. and then you'd have to have it in your five-year plan, and then the DOT would have to approve that. So it would be a so even if you had ARPA funds. So in your point, if you had a bridge that's not in this five-year plan, and you said, "Oh, somebody rained mm -hmm. cash on me," you still can't spend it until you put it into the five-year plan. Yeah, that may be, that may run some problems on what I just mentioned because I think that money ha for ARPA funds has to be allocated later by has later to be this year. Allocated by sometime. yeah, twenty six. Yeah, obviously we wouldn't twenty allocated, allocated this year by twenty four and then spent by twenty six. So. Obviously, we wouldn't turn away additional funds, um, but for that to work, um, to to being on the five year program, it would most likely have to go to a project that is already on the five year program, and j j just due to time of development. Of plans and, and, and clearances, yeah, it would probably have to go to something of these, which, in the end, would mean that potentially an additional project could come onto the program in years to come. Um, and we did fund some. We we funded a couple of bridges yep. out of the ARPA projects. You know that was one of the things we did to pull them up off the five year, because that was you know this this all goes back to you know I'll go back to a little history here. So if you recall. I don't recall the year when they added the additional gas tax and, you know, 10 cents a gas tax and, oh, you're going to get all this money. And I think what people always fail to understand is this is all contract work. And there are only so many contractors out there. So when we did that and they poured all this additional funding, you know, we lost probably, I think Keith said, three to four cents of that 10 cents. We lost a price mm -hmm. because you have more dollars, mm -hmm. you have, you have, the same number of contractors chasing the same, it, it, just, it all went to price. So, you know, you have to be really careful about how much money you throw at a problem too because there's only so much capacity to do the work and then you're just gonna pay more because you have more dollars vying for fewer contractors, they'll raise their price. Mm. So, the way the market works. What I foresee with our program in, in the soon to be years to come is we have a lot of, uh, bridges on our paved roads that are going to be nearing the end of their life um, or they're at least going to start needing to be posted for weight restrictions uh, the typical practice is, is you don't want posted bridges on your paved routes because that's where you want to encourage truck traffic and the majority of your traffic to be so it's going to be a balancing act of <clears throat> the the off off system uh, bridges a large majority of the ones that i i provide in that map and the paved bridges that, that potentially will be coming on. Um, it'll be somewhat of a balancing act. I, for the most part, usually I would, I would rate the importance of a, of a bridge that's on a paved road much higher than one that's on a gravel road. But, it, but in, in kind of in line with Danny's thinking there, Brian, do we have a, you know, forget about the five-year program. Do we have a, a you know, and I, and I know you don't design them completely, so, but you have a, swag as to what kind of money it's uh, a bridge is going to look like do we have that you know what do we what's what kind of a deficit in our construction we know we're going to get roughly you know five to eight million a year or whatever the number is we're going to be able to allocate to construction and we know you've got to if we had a 20-year plan you know what does that look like and how you know because it feels to me like we're not we're continuing to create deficit in forward years and I think we have to think about that you know because what kind of solutions can we start talking about for those mm -hmm. situations mm -hmm. 
Um, I, I don't have much more than what's what's on the program as far as years out um, and and money. I, I do know that that what we have programmed here, um, we're borrowed ahead in, in our bridge funding by about a year and a half. I believe we can borrow up to three years, um, and then we can bank. I think three years of funds. So if you had a big bridge, they they do that. So then if you had a big bridge coming up, you could potentially have five, six years of funding sitting there. Um, the only bad part is, is then you can't do much. Tell your five, tell your years. funds build up. And our our FM funding is is very similar to that as well. Um, you d certainly don't want to get too far into the hole. And then you also don't want to get to where you have too much money banked um, because then, then you do run the risk of, of them taking funds that you're not spending and then allocating them towards other counties. And that was, uh, for some board members that weren't around when we did it, the, the whole notion you talked about swap. So, so what, what, the, what the DOT gets all federal dollars. And, and what we what we were able to do for a couple of years, it didn't last very long, no. was uh, our Region 9 had agreed to uh, participate in SWAP, which basically said that what DOT was going to do is they were going to take all the federal dollars and use it on system because they can deal with the complexity of federal, federal dollars. There's a lot of requirements, as we know, uh, to when you start dealing with federal dollars. Uh, and then they were swapping, they were taking local dollars, state dollars, and they were giving that to local entities to do work. And, and what we saw, you know, people say, well, what, what does that mean? Well, in the practicality, as we saw, uh, like a lot of our smaller entities saw more interest in contractors in doing work. And so some of our smaller jobs, we got more work done. And we also saved about, Keith said, about 30%, giving your money went about 30% further. Well, what happened was it was such a popular program uh, that the DOT did not have enough money to swap it out. And so that they hmm. basically quit allowing that for us anyway mm -hmm. in Region 9, <clears throat> which was unfortunate. So those dollars now in Region 9 don't go quite as far as they did during that period. So it's all an opportunity. If the state could figure out a way to do that again, it would be great. It would be a great uh, benefit to the smaller entities. There, there's one thing I want to understand. <coughs> let's, if we approve the five-year plan, and let's say, and I'm not saying this board would, what they're going to do with those ARPA funds, but let's say that 875000 could we later, before that deadline, allocate them to some of these projects, move these funds, and then if you found a couple bridges that we could fit in that category and put on next year's five-year plan, does that math kind of work? It, it, would, it would work for us. I mean, we'd, we, would, we would prefer to pick a bridge that is util, utilizing local funds, but we have quite, we have quite a few projects that are <coughs> utilizing local funds right now. Hmm. So mm -hmm. from, from our point of view, it would work. Okay. I, I don't know all the rules with ARPA, though. So You believe it would work also? Yeah, we've already funded a couple of the bridges. You can use the ARPA funds for that. Yeah, I don't remember how much was it, $3 million we put? Somewhere in that range? No, the, for the bridges? the bridges? I thought it was th about like 3.1 million out of the eight we used on bridges. No, it was, it was not that much? It was 630,000. Oh, okay. Maybe that was what Keith had identified that would be, I think, yeah, that, was that would totally potential was projects for project. those funds. Yeah, there was about $3 million. We picked a couple of them, yeah. We there, picked a few. There, there was two uh, bridges that got replaced with box culverts. One was on 135th Street. And one was on 150th Street. Oh, man. I, I believe it was somewhere between six and seven hundred thousand. For some reason, six hundred. And those would have been all locally funded at the time. Yes. Yes. About six hundred, a little over six hundred thousand. Yeah, and the reason I say go after a local one is because uh, you <clears throat> usually, if you have uh, federal funds involved, you want to do as much as you can with federal funds because if you, it, it adds a lot to the process, not only on the front end of, of some of the design hoops we have to jump through, but also the inspection closeout, it, it does tend to drag things on quite a bit. So, um, yeah, I just brought it up to give us something to think about as a board to maybe, I mean, does that make sense um, going forward? I know we can't fix all of those 10 maybe, but if we could, if we could fix two or three that are the most 
pressing or maybe the most utilized by traffic, maybe that might be something to consider. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when bridges are coming down, you know, when, when bridges are nearing that end, end of life, um, it, it, it it's not much of a science as far as, uh, you know, when, when will they be need to be closed? Um, they do get inspected, and that, there's a science to that, but things can change quite rapidly in a year. Um, especially when you're talking about, like, say, piling decay. Um, we could have some fl some pretty substantial flooding that um, can cause quite a bit of damage to some of those bridges. So we, we do know the bridges that are coming down the pike, but the, the order of importance can change due to, you know, any factors that come up. And you're keeping the container ships away from those bridges, right? <laughs> Trying to. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Okay. I think I'll move to approve. So I have a motion by Danny. I just noticed when in the conversation I went through and, and went on the five-year plan, there's <coughs> there's six bridges on the plan that are on gravel. And there's three bridges on the plan that are on paved. The cost of the paved uh, structures on the paved roads is one point two to two million dollars each, and the cost of the Gravel road structures are four hundred thousand to eight hundred and forty-five thousand. So that kind of gives you an idea on where they're at and what they're located on the difference in cost for the the um, higher traffic and yep. truck traffic type of structures. I'll just say it that way. There's there's I'll the second the motion. Real quick. Okay. Didn't mean to interrupt. No, Sorry. that's all right. No, I just want to make sure we get discussion on it. Yeah, we have we have a motion and a second. You got both, you got the second, Tavy. Okay. I just did you further discussion. Yeah, go I just, ahead. I just thought that was interesting. That's yeah. all. Can I address what Scott said? Yeah. So um, that's very true. Uh, a, a bridge on a paved road typically costs more, and it's just not the paving. Um, a lot of times, uh, due to the higher traffic counts, mm -hmm. we need to build a a wider bridge by the uh, design criteria. So sure. that that increases the cost, you know, quite a bit. So you're yeah, it just it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something to bear in mind for every road we pave too, I suppose. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, any further discussion? So all the motion I was talking <laughs> to approve it. <laughs> okay. The motion was to approve the five-year plan and secondary roads budget. Perfect. All right. I know what we're doing. <laughs> All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same? Motion carries. Thanks, Brent. Uh, next Thank is you. discussion and possible action to approve various utility permits. Thank you, by the way, for that. All right, we have three utility permits today. The first is from. Muscatine Power and Water of Muscatine, Iowa. Uh, MPNW is requesting to install fiber optic cable along 180th Street from North Mulberry Road to North Tipton Road. Pretty straightforward. <clears throat> the second is also from Muscatine Power and Water of Muscatine, Iowa. Um, they're requesting to install fiber along North Isaac Ave and 180th Street. Um, it's kind of, this, this one's a little bit broken up. Uh, the permit starts at 1778 North Isaac Ave, <clears throat> running along North Isaac into Country Ridge Road. It also includes on 180th Street, starting at 2574, 180th Street, and going to the intersection of North Isaac. Our third is also from MPNW of Muscatine, Iowa. Um, They're requesting to plow uh, fiber optic cable along North Tipton Ave and 170th Street starting at 1824 North Tipton Road and ending at 2484 170th Street. I'd move to approve. Second. I have a motion by Scott, a second by Nathan. Is there any further discussion? Haley, do you know if this is have they drawn on the ARPA funds that we allocated to MPW? They have not yet. And I'm wondering if this appears to be the areas that they were yep. expanding that we funded the ARPA, used the county ARPA funds to bring the stuff. So 
I would expect those to come. Okay. That's all I have. That, that's what, okay. Uh, so I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same. Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Anything else, Brian? Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Brian. Thank you. All right. Item number five is a discussion possible action to approve the minutes of the March 25th, 2024 regular meeting and the March 28th, 2024 special meeting. I have a motion to approve. <clears throat> second. I have a motion by Scott and a second by Kurt. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same. Motion carries. Correspondence, Scott. Um, the only thing that, that I had, and I don't know if it falls into correspondence, I think it does, uh, was on 328 on Thursday, the public hearing uh, on the tax levy. Mm. And that's all I have. Okay. Nathan? Uh, same. Okay. Do you need anything else? I do not see anything else. Okay. Um, I'll list under correspondence. On the 26th, I, I uh, attended a, a virtual <laughs> meeting with uh, Colonel Sinkler and the, for the ports, uh, Corn Belt ports. And I think I passed you, uh, gentlemen, all, and Nancy, the, the uh, what is it, the ask, I'll say, from the Corn Belt ports. So if you recall, a number of years ago, uh, 2019, I believe, was the date, uh, we created the ports, I don't know what they were called, we called them P ports of Eastern Iowa and Western Illinois. Uh, uh, and we did a resolution to join that group along with a number of counties. And it was to create these port, you know, bottom line was uh, Colonel Sinkler had been a commander of the Rock Island Corps of Engineers for a number of years. And he was always uh, dismayed and concerned when he was here that the, his district never got any funding for improvements of that navigation or anything there because they didn't get any stature as it came to the port to, to the amount of activity that goes. So in learning about it, that the feds, what they have is a, they create these port statistical areas. And where that is, basically they capture what goes on in, on the navigational waterways that they're responsible for. And Sinkler said, because we weren't there in the, with all the activity here, we, weren't, we didn't attract any federal funds or any investment in the infrastructure. So all the, the basically pretty much every county in the bi-state region got together, and including a couple others like Dubuque and uh, Clinton and Jackson, which I don't believe are part of bi-state. Uh, we all got together and did resolutions, and we created this port statistical area. Well, lo and behold, uh, the port that we created became, was like the 68th largest port in the U.S. and gave it significant uh, precedence, right? Well, so now they've changed the rules. Then you know, 18 months later, people complained they changed the rules. So now Colonel Sinkler is back <coughs> and he is recommending that, you know, something about the states have to do something well, uh, a couple of Rock Island County just did it, uh, but he's recommending that we do this and we go back into it and uh, set up a, a new resolution and set up a governance structure and basically the Iowa ports to get this done again. So we can, he said, we'll be a top 100 port for sure. Uh, and, and so there's a lot of. You know, I would say there's some more political reasons in these things than I would have thought. Uh, but uh, anyway, so he, he put that out. You know, uh, I had, we had met with him like April of last year. I'd met with a group of, you know, so we've had some interest locally in this. Because, you know, there was talk about a port in Muscatine for some time. Um, and I know Clinton is interested in it. I'm not really sure where some of the other counties are going to go on this yet. But... Um, it appears like it's a. It doesn't really cost you anything. No, Sinkler has done this free, and you saw in his email he said that and is willing to continue to. I had talked uh, of a number of months ago with Mayor Bark and Muscatine, and had recommended maybe as the chamber he ought to come to the board and say, you know, should we consider? Uh, we won't always have somebody willing to do this for free, uh, 
uh, and is if this is important work? If it is, should we consider you know doing something? He's asking to contract with Muscatine County. I don't know why he picked us, but but what what whatever. Um, he would like to set draw up contract with them, and they they've indicated they do the work. But if you see, there are a couple of state reports, IFA and others that we would be responsible for. Then he's indicated they would help with those, but again, they won't do it for free. So this is something. If we do, I think we would want to be aware that we may be setting the taxpayer up for some expense long term, uh, potentially. And I think you know the question is. To me, it's a big chicken and egg problem is you don't know what you can get. I know Mayor Tomes came down and spoke from Rock Island. So apparently the city of Rock Island has a terminal in, in town that they have a third party that operates, that, but it belongs to the city of Rock Island. And so they did this and established the city of Rock Island. The council is the governing body and that operator of that terminal was able to attract some federal investment for improvements in that terminal. Uh, I don't know the amount of those dollars, but it was fairly significant. So this would allow potentially terminal operators or other operators in the area to get, uh, have a swing at funding for improvements to their operations. So uh, I don't know what we wanna, so that was that, I sent it to you. I think we have that on for discussion. Uh, on the twenty yeah, on the twenty seventh, I, I I met with the local EMS group, but I think they're getting close to come to an ask. It appears that so you've seen a number of counties around us that have gone to EMS as an essential service, and then put a countywide levy in. Uh, it doesn't appear like our EMS group is going to recommend that. I'm going to talk with Tybee a little bit about mm -hmm. some of the townships and what we're doing and how we're funding this. I don't understand. I pulled off a big legislative, I'm looking at all the code sections right now. I don't know where this is all going, but bottom line is, I think that the all the ambulance and EMS providers in the area are working together to formulate a plan, but it sounds like maybe they're gonna recommend creating a governing body, a 28D organization, and then have MOUs between each service, so how the funds flow. So it looks to me like there may need to be some kind of a fiscal agent that sits there that allocates these funds and handles all that billing. And I don't know what that, you know, they're putting that together. The city of Muscatine, as you know, provide, does their own ambulance service. So this is really the, the volunteer and kind of other organizations around the county. Uh, Scott County has Medic EMS, and I think that that's going to become a Scott County uh, program. Uh, Johnson County is kind of doing their own thing. Cedar County, if you saw, they just did a, uh, a, a countywide levy, I think 75 cents or something, and they're putting ambulance services in. They're doing some work up there. Lawiza County just did a county as a whole thing, and I, uh, I don't know what direction. I've talked to their supervisors, whether that's going to become a county department or what, but uh, I don't think Muscatine County, you know, me personally, I don't want to be in the ambulance business. Uh, I think well, I definitely don't want to be I, I don't think we don't have the overhead of the infrastructure. You talked about the board to oversee it. That would be their local board. Or it sounds like the EMS, the EMS Association, hmm. they would create a 2080, kind of like our Magic or, okay. or Muscom, a 2080 organization that would manage it. And then, you know, I'd, but we'd have to figure out the tax flow <laughs> and the funds. And, you know, because a lot of this is funded through township levies. And if you read it, um, I don't know how many of our townships actually provide funding to EMS, and then a lot of it it's 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 just kind of weird because if you read the code, the code says townships are responsible for that, uh, and they have to they have to provide funding for it, but it says they're responsible for fire and EMS, but they only they only have to provide funding for fire. <laughs> So a lot of the funding is funneling through local fire departments and then to the EMS agency. So it, it's mm. just kind of a mess. And I'll probably get a couple of our legislators you know, more involved than they've been to kind of say, is there are there some code things that need to be done here to, to and cleaned up? But anyway, so that's, I would expect things to be coming on that in the next six months. But it's, you know, I don't think they're going to ask mm. us to do, because uh, that was something you have to do like in a general election. 
you have to put it on a general election, and I don't think that that's going to be the ask. So, uh, and then I did the twenty eighth public hearing. So, Danny, correspondence. I got I got that email from you in regards to the port, and I did reach out to him. We can talk about that when we get to the discussion part a little bit. Uh, and we all got several emails from Megan Teeny on yeah. for the housing yeah, study. That's true, yeah. I've, there's a tremendous amount of information in there. I did scan through and read through some of it over the weekend, and uh, there's a lot of good information in there. You know, we just hopefully we can make something out of it. Well, but. I think to that point, is we ought to see is because we had questions in some of our public hearings. Should is there a way that we can get those and then post them on our website for the. You know, we funded that the county. We now have the final report. Just got it this week, last week. Yeah, we, we probably do probably want to should put that, put that on our, that on our website, website so somewhere, can that so people could study. access it. Yeah, I, I think the city is going to do that, or may have already. We talked about that the other day. I yeah, don't know if they've done it yet. <coughs> I think we're meeting this week. Right? Okay, uh, that's all I have for correspondence. Correspondence. I had the the public hearing on the Thursday. Okay. What about committee region uh, meetings, Kurt? I had uh, we lead on Thursday the twenty eighth. I had uh, the we lead meeting in West Liberty. Okay. On the twenty seventh, I had Mississippi Valley Workforce Development Finance Committee meeting. Okay. Any more? That's it. Okay. On the, and I had on the twenty seventh, I had the Region Nine uh, Transportation, and on the twenty seventh, I had the By State Commission. Anything? I did not have anything. I did not have anything. Okay. Item number eight. <coughs> Items of the administration office. Eight A is discussion and direction regarding the port of Eastern Iowa. And that's all for you, Jeff. Yeah, that's all for us. <laughs> so yeah, you know, so I told you I, I had that meeting. Danny, I think you you reached out to Colonel Sinclair and talked to him a little bit. Maybe you tell about what kind of where you're thinking. Well, this. well, I had a I had a probably a twenty minute conversation with him, just trying to understand. Um, a little bit more about what it is and, and a lot of what you already said but it opens up if we if we become a port and they the way I understood it it wasn't going to cost us anything him and another ex-military guy that he works with that used to work for the Corps um, have missed out on lots of funding over the year for our navigational waterways projects that the Corps could do and I think there's some other funding that it opens up if we're declared a port um, now it can lead to eventually <clears throat> being a declared a port. That it can help lead eventually to a physical port, you know. That it, but that may be several years down the road. It could. It may happen. It may not happen. And uh, everything I had took from the conversation, it seemed like it was a valuable thing to have. What didn't look like it was going to cost the taxpayers any dollars. They was going to do all the work and. Seemed like it was just a, something that we could probably definitely consider moving forward. Um, he did say that he's been to other boards, whether it's city councils, board of supervisors, whatever, and given a presentation. So I know on here there's a direction for that. I, I think if we're going to move forward on it, I think that maybe we could ask him to be on the agenda sometime to provide us uh, all that type of information so the board's getting it as a whole and uh, then decide how to move forward there. I, I don't know, I was thinking, I think I talked to you about this, is there a negative side of this? Now, in talking to him, everything seemed all peaches and cream, and maybe it is, but it'd be nice to know if we if we could hear some, some uh, opinions from others that may be against it for some reason, because if there's some reasons out there that we shouldn't do it, I'm not aware of them. The, the, there was, a, and I think there was, uh, so Mike Norris, there was an email attached, I think, to the bunch of stuff I sent uh, that had a conversation with Mike Norris. Mike Norris is the uh, executive director of the Southeast Iowa Regional Planning Commission. So he would be Denise Boulat's uh, uh, counterpart. Mm -hmm. and so Denise Boulat is the director here. And then there's another name mentioned in some email who is the one that covers Clinton Jackson and in Water uh, Waterloo area or uh, whatever county that is? I remember Blackhawk, right? Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, so when this initiative originally happened, 
all the planning commission executive directors were 100% on board and actually they wrote the resolutions, helped us drive them through all the boards and get that done. I get a sense that Denise is not on board on this. And so I don't know why I need to reach out to her. I think we should reach out to her and say, what do you, what, what do you see? And, and because they were originally very hip. I know I saw Mike's comment. He said, you know, if you do this, you know, because they have one for like Lee County that he, he manages. So there's insurance considerations, there's fiscal, you know, the kind of things I mentioned if, if you wind up. But they actually have a port. So I, I don't know if this would be different or what, you know. But even then, you know, Sinkler saying that, you know, there's two uh, hmm. reports that would have to be produced for Iowa Finance Authority and somebody, another Iowa department, I think both under, and I think the Iowa Economic Development Authority, two different ones. And that you know we would probably have to do if we were the if we were had a group with him and that's like well there's a cost to that and what's that cost and who's going to bear that cost so yeah. I spoke with Clinton County they're gonna they're gonna talk about it Scott County is was Ken Beck which is the chair of Scott County was going to meet with their administrator Mahesh and Denise and talk and see where she was at what she, her thoughts were so I'm kind of I don't think there's a uh, impending crisis on this I think we can wait and maybe do some due diligence on okay well, if we right. sign up what does this really mean because yeah, I, I, I mean it seems like a good idea it but, does. but said but, something about in the future though there could be some implications maybe some tax money being involved what were you thinking there Jeff what, well if, why if, and, it, you know if you have to put together a 2080 organization and you have to okay. run it you know, okay, and then there's there's six counties, so that requires you know effort, right? It's not that doesn't happen for nothing. So even a 20 AD, you're going to have to have you know a governance board. Okay, who's going to take minutes? Who's going to produce minutes? Who's going to publish minutes? There's going to be public, you know, all of that. You know, all the ings. There's cost, and and that's okay if they're nominal, and, and there's significant benefit. But I'm also I'm not sure. You know, should the should the recipients of the benefit be the ones that are funding the operation, as well? You know, is this something that we should ask the general taxpayer to do? I don't know. I mean, I'm just these are just things I think about. Well, that's one that's one of my or a couple concerns I would have is just, does it does it initiate cost for the taxpayer in the in the future if we become uh, part of this, and what other additional responsibilities does it put? on the county or county employees that we may not be aware of. So those are all things that yeah. we need to figure out. I think out. that's a list of questions that we start dialing into it. And, and so. Hmm. As I look at this, um, we would be one of a part of the Corn Belt ports. Is that correct? I believe so, yes. Yeah. And, and, and with that, how... <clears throat> what is the what is the length of the stretch of of river and counties that we would be well you'd be looking at Louisa Th this proposal would be Louisa Muscatine Scott Clinton <coughs> Jackson and Dubuque and Dubuque counties would all go together those six counties well, so that's up the is that three on the Illinois side as well no so it'd just be an Iowa. just the Iowa, just the Iowa. The, I think Illinois already has some in the uh, area it, it has something to do Nathan with the different in the structure of the so for example uh, Illinois has a maritime section in their DOT and so they you know this is about these ports have to align with your DOT that was the the little crinkle they put in that kicked us out of the deal. And because Iowa does not have a deal, a maritime section, uh, that's the issue. Gotcha. And, and that makes, it makes some sense that Iowa doesn't because, you know, you don't have a lot of stuff going on. You know, he said it's much simpler in Missouri, Illinois, Wisconsin, Minnesota. They all have maritime sections in their DOT. And so it lines up, but... I was wondering, just thinking, uh, with like Illinois, they're going to have ports there off the Great Lakes, and I was wondering if that didn't throw a, 
snafu into how they structure what their <coughs> courts are in the state of Illinois. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, he, he, you know, Sink, this group, Corn Belt Courts group, did this game, I'll call it a game, right, it's for what it is, in a number of areas. They did it down the Chicago mm -hmm. River. They did it over to like, by Ohio. I mean, and, and I think it ruffled a lot of feathers for some of the big courts because it pointed out that in in, in this area, these navigational waterways we have coming through the Midwest. Uh, so what was happening, so for example, all of the terminal activity that was going on from, I don't remember where, but you basically, St. Louis was getting all the credit for all the activity happening in this area with terminals and everything. It looked like activity of St. Louis, so they were getting all the investment. Or up north in Minneapolis, Area, you know, they were getting the investment because it looked like, you know, this was a big black hole, and and so what he said is, you know, that's where the investment has gone over the years to the navigational waterways by by putting it where it was due. He said he didn't really say, you know, I want to say, well, that's kind of like shady, almost like felt to me is like you're not really recognizing the data where it's actually happening. Like, well, you really can't. That's there wasn't this. You know, it's it's more of an administrative phenomena than anything. But uh, so I I don't know. I mean, it's it's complicated stuff, and I think it, I just want to be cautious. I don't want to get into anything that's going to cause us a bunch of costs and work, and we get no benefit from. And I'm always leery of a contract where someone says, "I'll set up an organization for you, and then I'll run it for you." Right. You know. You just bring the money. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, we'll, we'll we'll get a project going, and then I'll run it. Um, I don't know. I, I, this company's been in, in place for all of three months. You know, I understand this gentleman's probably done some other things, but I'm gonna, I want to learn a lot more about it. I'd like to hear again what Denise has to say about it. I mean, in a vacuum, I think the idea of establishing a port, and this is a great one. Does this have anything to do with the concept of the modular port that, that was kicked around? I guess has kind of been kicked around a little bit in the last few years. In the conversation I had, this part would have to be done for that physical port someday in the future to happen, if I understood it so correctly. So creating the organization is necessary for the modular container port. And that modular container port, we're not entirely sure where it would go. No doubt a lot no, of there's a, there's, the port. I think they've got a location they'd like to put it in if, if it comes to together and I think that's the end of 41st Street I mean all the land has been hmm. locked up for that location and I think if it comes together that was with Rich Dreyer GP started that uh, who's the they is that the this guy or is that the us that would like to put it there it's it's that's it's us. a private entity yeah, absolutely it's us. sure it's okay. a private entity in Muscatine but I, think that, I think that guy if there was ever a port I don't think he cares where it's at we'd no. be jostling with different hogs at the trough for it though I'm guessing right. well yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'd love it, but I just want to know more about how... I, I can't tell from this and the, the brief conversation we've had how closely our interests align. I think that's a fair statement. And I, I guess I don't exactly know, you know, the, the, the crucial compensation line in the contract is left blank. Um, it looks like it's not to retain uh, exceed $500 somewhere before or somewhere after that, but I'm just not sure. Yeah, that's the, oh, yeah. that's other direct costs. No, so that's not so. Yeah, not knowing what what the heck he wants to get paid for this. Well, you saw in the email where he said, you know, people that have done this before have been, you know, it's cost upwards of one hundred and twenty thousand dollars, and I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but this isn't a specific project, so I, I mean, I think there's just a lot of questions in it. Where's the city, and Brad? You know, must be or must be interesting. Mm -hmm. So, so where all like this that. was happening is the you know so. The city of Muscatine, you know, I don't, I don't know, Brad has kind of been, you know, we have, we have a group in Muscatine that was seriously considering a, a port, doing a container on barge or doing a port to offload truck traffic and, you know, and I think it was dangerously close to being financially uh, viable, but, you know, nothing, it hasn't kind of completely moved forward. 
Um, so I don't I don't know. That's a different initiative. This would be this would this would help with that initiative. Um, so I know the city of Clinton, and then that's why this kind of kicked back up. The city of Clinton, Iowa, is was wanting to go it on their own because they have a need, and and you know so you know they've said well if if this group comes together that would suit what we need and we'd be happy to join it and be part of it because it would give us additional benefit as well. So I you know it, it's it's a there's it's. I think part of the issue is there's just nobody leading the charge. You know, Sinkler, and it's like, kind of like, you know, Scott says, you know, as somebody that's going to create an organization and run the organization for you, it's like, yeah, is that, you know, or maybe Nathan said it, I know, it's, that's, you kind of got to take that with a grain of salt, so. Well, it may, it may be a good idea in the, in to have him sometime in the future come and give us a presentation and then we can decide how to go forward past that on collecting additional information. What I'll do is I'll reach out to the other counties, see what they're mm -hmm. thinking. I'll talk to Ken after he has met with Denise. Maybe I'll reach out to Denise and speak with her a little bit about <coughs> it and see what the, what the prevailing thoughts are. I'll try to summarize it and send it to everybody, and then we can put it on for discussion at another time. Well, maybe you can give us some other folks to talk to who have uh, used his services. They, I think they, I think he's claiming they, this is they've already put four of these districts together. Yeah, they have. So that might be a good idea to bring some of those players in just from those areas to to see oh, if they're having any problems or what issues they have or good they've had out of it. And and this is this wouldn't supplant the resolution we already have. So we already have a a, a resolution joining the, you know, ports of eastern Iowa and western Illinois. We already did that in 2019. Mm -hmm. So this would be something additional. So I don't, you know, okay. I think we kind of know where we're going or not going on that. All right. Next item on the agenda is item A, B, discussion of possible action regarding the Mustang County Compensation Board. FY24-25 salary recommendations for elected officials. So you all should have gotten in your stuff a packet the recommendation by the compensation board, mm -hmm. and I believe it was a 5% uh, for all elected officials across the board, and was it something different for the supervisors? I don't recall. Well, they recommend 5 for everybody, five for even everyone. the supervisors. Even the supervisors. Mm -hmm. And there was... Uh, um, Nancy had a conversation with the salary study group, and and <clears throat> as I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, Nancy, that uh, they weren't able to shed much light on this in the last week. Yeah, nope. Did they give you any indication on when this would be wrapping up? Uh, I meet with them again Wednesday. We're shooting for in the next couple of weeks to have everything tied up. Does it make sense to wait until then? Is that something we're able to do? Well, we need to publish today. Yeah, yeah. we have to publish we today. Have to, so. you have to, when we publish the budget, we have to put in the, the uh, wages for yep. the Board of Supervisors. If you guys haven't physically set them yet, then I guess they would go in at what the comp board recommended. Because technically, you have until the, the public hearing. Well, we better make a decision then. To make a decision about the the salary for elected officials, but we have to, she has to send the budget today for publication. Got it. Mm -hmm. As I understand, there were two competing equally uh, splits while I was home with my food poisoning. Yeah. Fun. Um, so what were the arguments back and forth? Can you, I don't, we don't want to recap the whole thing, but you guys. Well, I think it's just, just in general, what do you, you know, yeah. I think the, if you if you read the minutes of the compensation board, they were basically, yeah. you know, I think everybody was kind of recommending to go in at what the board had budgeted for uh, compensation. Um, you know, it's it, these are always difficult. You know, it's compensation is always difficult. I think if you if you uh, at our hearing the other night, you heard a you know, one of our local residents talk about you know the. The erosion of their, you know, they got a nice raise from social serv uh, social security, but then their Medicare uh, expenses went up. So, you know, people are 
people are struggling out there as as are our employees so i think it's always a it's a challenge to, yep. to do you know the, the thing that i th think of is you know i look i've been on this board now for i don't know a long time 10 12 years 13 years maybe and i don't i don't ever recall a, a raise less than two and a half or three We've been typically in the two and a half to three percent range. <coughs> we haven't, as we've had certainly times when the general economy wasn't good and people got a lot less than the than the rest of the world. And I think the board's always been fair. And you know, I think a five percent, you know, in my mind, it's too rich. I don't think we can afford it. I think people are struggling. You know, we already had to take tax. And we've had some. We had a big raise in our insurance costs. We had a big raise in some other costs. So we're we're, we're going to spend another 900000 next year just to cover costs. And, and the I, tower? The tower was what? The tower with the communication thousand? stuff. So, you know, I was, I, I, I want to, you know, definitely support an increase. And I know it's difficult, but, you know, I, I'd probably be more in the, you know, 3% range and, you know, take the supervisors to nothing. You know, I think that would be fine by me. Is that a motion? I could make that oh. a motion. <laughs> well, yeah, so. Because um, I think that would probably be more in line with where SSI and CPI is right now. If you look at what the legislature has done, you know, you know, kind of looking at what they're doing to county supervisors, you know, uh, uh, you know, they're capping our ability, you know, our allowable growth in that, you know, CPI or C just less. And I think CPI is around three 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 point one something like that mm -hmm. so it's in that range so you know i i can't justify a five percent you know i could go with three i think last time yeah. we had a motion around four cpi um, cpi is uh april may june average add up it's about 2.9 cola is 3.2 um cola is what 3.2 mm. um for, in, in march of 24 you know uh um you got uh, union negotiations coming down the pipe with uh, two or three groups, four groups. Four groups, I think. I guess yeah. I need mm -hmm. to add them up. Um, so, you know, there's uh, there's a lot to think about there. But uh, I would I would I would concur with your thoughts. I I might be I'm, I might be just a scose richer than what you are, Jeff, but. But not much, I'm telling you, not much. So what did you go back to? You said Cola was three point two. Yeah, that's what I have. And yeah. CPI is running last quarter's run two nine five. Yeah. And I, you know, I would say I've always, I've always been kind of, you know, what what we do for our seniors ought to be good enough for us, you know. And I've always been around that senior Cola is kind of where I thought the county ought to be as a general. Uh, mm -hmm. So I could support something in that range. Yeah. Where are you at, Nathan? Well, I think we're going to continue to see uh, employee costs rise, not just from a benefits perspective, but from a salary, wage, whatever perspective. I think that the demographic shift here is pretty clear that the country is getting older, people who work are retiring, and there's fewer people. So uh, certainly I think... Um, it's going to be a struggle. Um, I don't like anything necessarily under COLA. That doesn't mean I'm lockstep bound by it in my thinking. I, I could see something like a 3.5 that, that's a little bit over COLA. It, it, it's a little bit of progress um, toward meeting those larger salaries that I anticipate we're going to have to be paying. I think it's fair and that it, it um, you know, it, it it treats our workers, our, our folks, our team just as well or better than, um, you know, folks that aren't working. But it's still, I think, force too rich. And, uh, you know, so that, I'd go 3-5. You know, supervise whatever, I don't care what we do. But um, if we're going to do it across the board, that's what I would say. Is that a motion? <laughs> sure. Do 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 is that a motion? Unless you guys want to say something. Is that a motion across the board or where do you want to do? Well, what, so what, I, I'll tell you. I'll tell you where I'm at. I'm at three and a quarter, and none. For the supervisor. Three and a quarter for everybody. None for the soups. That's where I'm at. 
I know the compensation board's not going to be happy with me. Just got one of the ever unhappy with you. Well, I just. Why start now? Well, <laughs> I just. I, I think I think the board you know, and I understand you know uh, of, of future boards coming uh, you know and, and so on and so forth but I I, I also kind of believe that you know it, it's 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 kind of giving back to the community you know I mean I I don't run for this because you know I have to have the job you know I run for this because because I care I've lived here all my life. I'm completely so, fine with the supervisors at zero, but the, the only thing I have a comment on that is you have to somewhat protect the integrity of the position, and the position is that we're 88 out of 99 counties, and with those decisions, you you may be eventually 99. And if you're okay with 99, maybe I'm okay with 99, I don't know, but uh, that, that has no bearing what they what they do there because it, it, it's a never-ending race, you know, it's well, I'm here, so I got to be there, and you know, it's 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 a race, you know, as opposed to what you can live with. You know, everybody's got to live. You know, what's can, what can you live with? Everybody's got to live. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So you guys got any numbers that you want to? I throw moved out? down three and a half, and then the supervisor, whatever. I mean, I threw my number out last year. I'm waiting for you guys. You were, you I'm were, waiting for you guys. You waiting for somebody to put it. Let's, okay, so. You, all right, we're all over the board. We're, we're anywhere from three to three and a half to well, let me, three and a quarter. Let me make a motion if we have to vote four times because yeah. we can't. I'll, I'll move three and a half and zero for soups. Three and a half and zero. Okay, we have a motion. I'll second. We have a second. We have a motion by Nathan, a second by Kurt. Motion by Nathan, second. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 I can support that. Opposed? Aye. Okay, passes. Or is it, or five zero? Was it all eyes? All eyes, yep, okay. all eyes. Three, five, zero, okay. Item number C is action to approve the proposed 2425 Muscatine County budget for pro publication. So moved. I have a motion by Nathan. Second. Second by Scott. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same. Motion carries. Item number D is action to set a public hearing on the proposed 24-25 Muscatine County budget for Monday, April 15th, 2024 at 9 a.m. So I have a motion by Nathan. I'll second. Second by Danny. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We'll oppose the same. Motion carries. Anything else, Nancy? I don't think I have anything else. Okay, item number nine is to receive information from county employees. Any county employees want to address the board? And seeing no one come forward, receive comments from the public. Any members of the public wish to address the board on an issue that's not been on the agenda today? Seeing no one come forward, it is 1018 and we are adjourned.